Hey, what's going on folks? Today I'm gonna to show you how to build lists in Apollo and Sales Navigator. Now, this week is a continuation of my video from last week where we built an ICP exercise together. So today we're gonna to use that exercise to build the list in Apollo and Sales Navigator. Now, if you haven't watched that video, it's totally fine. This video can still be super useful for you. But if you want some help trying to figure out who to target in the first place and then how to start building a foundation for a high quality list, I recommend checking out that video first. But okay, let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay, so if you if you remember from last week, what you're looking at here is the ICP exercise, but now we've got it filled in. And so um, as the baseline, you wanna find anywhere from five to 10 companies that are either your current, like best clients or your dream clients. And then you wanna go through use their LinkedIn profiles for the best point of contact at that company, and then just walk through and fill in this table as you go. And as you can see here, we've got everything from the title, keywords from their profile, how long they've been in their role, and then we've also got a lens for their company. So what industry they're in, how big their company is, and other keywords from the company LinkedIn profile. Now, one thing you wanna keep in mind with these keywords is you don't just wanna pull random keywords from their profile and drop them into the sheet here. The lens that you wanna use is like, what are good keywords that are representative of why they're a good fit for your product or your service? So if they say they like dogs or they like to travel, that might be useful in like writing a personalized message, but in terms of actually building a, a really high quality list, those keywords aren't gonna be useful and you really wanna make sure that you're just pulling in these keywords that are representative of their company and why they're a good fit for your service or your product. You wanna make sure that you're just pulling in keywords that are representative of why they're, they're a good fit for your product or service. So okay, now let's take a look at Apollo and let's start using that exercise to build out a list. So, all right, we'll start with job titles. We had CEO, founder, co-founder. And what I like to take a look at as I'm building is like how many contacts do I still have left in this pool? How much is each filter changing my pool of contacts? Now for me, my ideal customers were in the United States. This doesn't have to be yours if I can type today. Employee size was between 11 to 50. Now I'm gonna jump over the keywords for a second. I'm gonna select only the verified emails. Apollo, um, it has pretty decent data, um, and even though you're selecting the verified contacts here, you're still gonna wanna run any contacts that you pull through another verification tool. And, you know, depending on the industry that you're pulling contacts from, you know, we've seen, for example, in like hospitality, only about 30% of the contacts that you pull from Apollo, even though you've selected verified are actually verified, or SaaS, you get about 70% yields. So you, you definitely wanna make sure that you are double checking these outside of Apollo, but let's go ahead and take a look at the industries. So we had software development, that was the LinkedIn filter, but that translates in Apollo to computer software. And boom, here's the first problem in building this list. Adding this industry, it took us down from like 130,000 contacts to 140. This might be okay, but for me personally, this what this kind of indicates here is that maybe they're categorized or classified differently under different industries in Apollo versus on LinkedIn. So I'm just gonna get rid of this filter altogether. And as you can see, we jump back up to 133,000. Um, and I'm just gonna use keywords instead to refine this list. And so in here you have include keywords and exclude keywords. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can play with this. I, I will start just with the include keywords for the sake of this exercise and I will start pulling in. So we have AI and it, it drops it down quite a bit, but keep in mind we're gonna add more keywords here. We had generative AI, let's see how that changes it. Not at all, so I'm gonna get rid of that one. Conversational intelligence, not at all. We'll get rid of that one. So you can see it, this is an iterative process and you're kind of exploring here um, how it changes your list and what keywords are actually gonna be useful for you. SaaS, that one's definitely gotta add some. There we go. The cloud computing, I'm just gonna go for cloud for right now. 
All right. B to B. Machine learning. Let's see if just the abbreviation adds anything. Did that add anything? Uh, nope. Let's try machine learning. Um, we had RPA. I'm gonna just do robot process automation. So instead of adding all of the keywords in and then pushing enter, I like to do it one by one to see if and how it even changes it. So I don't have a bunch of like bloated keywords that aren't really doing anything. Let's try B2B SaaS. Probably won't change anything. Nope. Try big data. What about just data? Now looking at the company keywords, we had platform software that added a lot so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop here for now uh, because as you the bigger and bigger you get you know it can be a, a good thing and, and you have like a large total addressable market but it can also be a bad thing because you've just got a, a bunch of contacts in here and now if you just try and build a campaign for all of these um, you know you might not be building really relevant campaigns that are going to have that's going to have messaging that converts at a high level. And so, like the next step that I would do here is I would start going through. And the way that I like to approach this, I'm going to skip this for now because this process can take you know it can take an hour, it can take 10 minutes. But what I'll do is I'll go into each individual company. I'll look at their LinkedIn profile, their Apollo company profile, and I'll start on page one. And I'll look and I'm like, hey, is this a good fit? or is this a bad fit? And if it's a bad fit, what I'll do is I'll look for keywords in the description here or on their LinkedIn profile and I'll pull one of those keywords and now I'll add it to my exclude keywords. And I'll do that and I'll do that on page one until I have like a perfect fit. And then I'll jump to like page 10. And then I'll do that exercise again because the further and further back you go, uh, the less close to all of your keywords these are gonna be. And so the further back in this search you go, the in theory the worst these contacts are going to get and so i'll start at the front and then i'll go to like page 10 and then i'll go to page 50 and then i'll go to page 100 depending on how long it is and i will go through that page and i'll look for companies that are a bad fit until i can go you know maybe to page 50 and an entire page page 51 and 50 are all a good fit i will keep refining and adding exclusion keywords until i've really tightened it up and some of these further back pages are still demonstrating or, or displaying good fit companies okay now how can we build this in sales navigator so I'll pull up sales navigator and i'm going to start with a lead search and what i like about sales navigator is you also have the ability to use boolean searches and a boolean search it includes modifiers or operators like and or not quotation marks and parentheses so using these operators it allows you to refine your search down and get a tighter list today is not going to be a deep dive or a master class on how to use these modifiers and operators i'll do that in a later video so for the sake of today we'll go through we'll use the icp exercise to start building a list and then we'll play around with some of the modifiers here in the search bar up above so let's start at the top we got company headcount was between 11 to 50 current job title we had ceo founder co-founder of course you can expand this out as much as you need years in their current position so this was one of the interesting filters that we weren't able to use in apollo but we can use in sales navigator and then if you have the apollo chrome extension you can just save these directly into apollo but you get better filters in here and so the, in the sheet that I had with the contacts I used, it looks like the shortest amount of time in their current role was two years and five months. So I'm gonna go three plus years and it's gonna hopefully give us a little bit more established businesses. Skip over this stuff for now. Geography, all of mine were in the United States. I can't spell this today. So we still have a pretty large list. The industry was software development. All right, and that's everything on the front end. And now what I can start to use are some of these modifiers and keywords. So we had 
AI. And again, I like to go one at a time here just to see how each one of these changes it. So that takes it down. Now let's try, put or, because it can be either this keyword or another keyword that I give it. And I'm gonna try generative AI. And because I don't just want generative alone, I want it used with generative AI in that exact order. I'm gonna use quotation marks. Doesn't look like that really added anything. So I'm gonna take it out. And the reason why I'm taking it out is because LinkedIn only gives you the ability to use a certain number of modifiers in a search here. And so I wanna be really strategic about the ones that I pick. Let's try SAS. That added quite a few. Or B2B. That's probably gonna add quite a few. Or machine learning. And now I've got parentheses in here because I know I'm gonna use a not function afterwards. So that's fine for now. And again, what I would do here, now that I've got you know a list of 9,000 people, this could be a nice broad list that you'll wanna refi down outside of Sales Navigator, but there's probably a bunch of junk in here that um, isn't actually gonna be a good fit if you're trying to target software companies, maybe they specialize in AI or machine learning, you're probably gonna get like software development companies and other agencies in here as well. And so what I would start to do is I would open up each one of these company LinkedIn profiles and I would look, is it a fit? Is it not a fit? If it's not a fit, what are keywords that I can pull from that company profile and add it in here um, as like a not function to start excluding those? And so when you use these operators, you, you need to use them in all caps or they're not gonna work. And so as an example, I know within here, there's probably gonna be consulting companies that I don't want. So that took it down or agency. And so I'm, I'm adding these in here without really looking at them just to kind of demonstrate how this will change the size of the list for you. And so that's pretty much it. At this point, again, it would be a manual process and I would start on page one and I would look at pretty much all of these at first because the, the more work you can put in on the front end to refine this down with really strategic keywords and filters, the tighter your list and the better your list is gonna be. And I would start on page one and when page one is perfect, I'm gonna go to page eight and then I'm gonna look at those and, and I'm gonna refine it until page eight is perfect. And I'm gonna go all the way to the back and I'm gonna look for these really bad fit contacts and I'm gonna use those to further refine this list down. And you might have a whole bunch of filters in here, but that's a good thing because you're gonna have a really high quality list. And then if you've got the Apollo Chrome extension and you can save all these to Apollo or add them to a specific list, which is a really great feature. Um, the last thing I wanna show you uh, is not specifically for this list, but other ways that you can really refine the list with filters that I personally like to use that, that I find are useful are some of the activities and shared experiences. So um, this is great stuff that you can personalize off of or triggers that you can use. You know, post in the last 30 days, that's great. You can engage with their content as well and have just a curated list of people that are a little bit more active on social media um, and hit them on multi-channel in like a relevant and personalized way. But then on the account search as well, after I posted the last video, I got quite a few questions on like how to go about um, adding the de department head count growth. Like if I wanted to go after software companies whose engineering departments have grown by 50% or more, um, we can come in here and like, you know, for that use case I was talking about in the last video, the department headcount, I picked sales, had a max of one person. So as you can see, we got like nine and a half thousand companies in here, brought it down to two and a half thousand. And now department headcount growth with engineering has grown by at least 50%. And now we've got a much tighter shot group and this might be a you know a better way to start building the list from an account perspective so you can really narrow down on like what companies are exhibiting um, different like kind of patterns of growth that might be uh, like an early indicator of uh, being a good fit for your product or your service and then from here you can select those companies save them to a list and then once they're saved to a list you can go back to your lead filters and you can pull from your account list. And so now you, know, you have this account list of the 500 companies, you select all of them, save them to that list, then you can pick that account list and now start applying your lead filters in here to only find 
the CEOs of those companies or the director of sales of those companies. Because if you just pull the companies, pull them into Sales Navigator, you're gonna get everybody at those companies. And so you can start to refine down with some of the lead filters, but you first have to build an account filter, save them to a list, pull them in from your account list into a lead search. So that is all I got for you today. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button below. It helps the channel out a lot. But otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Bye.